began. It, what was it called? Smuggler's Haven. It began at Smuggler's Haven. Oh, yeah. Um, and when we were all there for end of GCSEs, um, the sort of all, all of us dotted around different caravans. Um, and me and Dom were staying in one. I didn't really know you guys. No, you know, we sort of. Cause we, we did. Yeah, I used to know Roscoe because Roscoe's playing on our sort of rival football team. So Roscoe and I sort of know each other briefly, but none of, none of the other guys knew Roscoe and didn't even know Gwil to a certain extent. We had a few drinks and we came up with the idea to be in a band. Um, and so what should we call it? And the first thing on the top of my head was traffic sound. I don't know why or where that came from. Ed sort of went, yeah, we should start a band. I think it was mainly because he wanted to like go and brag about it, maybe like. Yeah, I'm in a band. <laughs> I'm in a band. <laughs> go to like girls, girls caravan, be like, yeah, I'm in a band. <laughs> and then we kind of proceeded to walk, like, walk, like every evening when you're there, you kind of walk around into other people's caravans, say hi, whatever, and we were telling people, we're in a band now. Yeah, we didn't have a song. It was just the two of us. And then we got to college, and yeah, Ed was the, Ed was the main. Ed sort of, pushed um, it through because he was the middle yeah, puppeteer point. Puppeteer of it, wasn't, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He knew all of us individually, probably the most, or he had the most contact time with each of us. We had the first rehearsal at my house. Um, was, was I had my drum kit there. The first ever cover we did was Seven Nation Army, which Seven I think Nation. most bands do when they first start. Exactly. Out. I think, but it all went tits up. The fifth Beatle. Um, Pete Matthews. Pete was just, he's just one of those people who just doesn't have rhythm. This is dramatic now, to turn to the camera. So, he was shit. We did actually play a gig though with Pete, we played the King Edward gig. Yeah. Uh, which was actually really good, so it was... Yeah, that was, yeah, that was, must have been our first gig. That was our yeah. first gig. Uh, which was kind of weird that we got into it because only one of us went to Kez. <laughs> but it was a good gig. Um, it was a battle of bands, we didn't win. I think it was a bit of a joke. It was a bit of a fix, because well, yeah, we we four of the five of us weren't well, even going yeah, there, yeah, and it was so Kez I, I can't understand land. why, but still, I thought it was based on crowd reaction. And, uh, and we did get a bit if of you ask me, reaction. Yeah, it was a bit of a fix. Yeah, no, it was, that was yeah, a great we, gig. We, uh, were like, we were like the Bon Jovi at, yeah. at a kid's disco. So awesome. Absolutely awesome. Yeah, it was, actually. I so, you know, Looking back, it is still one of my most enjoyable gigs of, that we have done. Yeah. Um, we were crowd. Just, we were just raw. In yeah. the sense, we hadn't practiced uh, enough that we normally would have done in the build-up to other gigs. Yeah, and that was great fun, and yeah, I guess the first time we played together, and then as soon as you you do that and you get the nerves out your system, it's quite it's quite a buzz actually. How afterwards. many of our own did we play? I think it was just oh, maybe, I haven't played maybe keeper. This time. No keeper. And keeper. No, we definitely did maybe we did maybe yeah. this time into luck. Don't strike me twice. Yeah. And what was quite cool about that as well was Roscoe was quite. Um, I guess you've got the footage. Roscoe was quite the front man in that sense, wasn't he? He was like yeah, dancing. That's what, like, we were practicing. We're like, God, he's a bit lazy. He's a bit shit. Yeah. And as soon as we do this gig, he's like, he's out there, like. Yeah. It was good fun, and uh, it sort of pushed on from there. Um, Pete left the band, and then Don became bass player, and Roscoe picked up the guitar. Um, he could already play, um, hmm. so it was. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was, um, I'm sorry. It was bad. I mean, I mean, like ba bands don't really have the opportunity to get lucky, and that they have they have someone to support them all the way through. Um, and uh, yeah, because I I can't I can't actually remember specifically how it came about. I mean, I remember right. we we yeah. like we'd made a demo, like a shit first band's demo as they typically are. And Simon overheard, and said, "Oh, that's great. Have you guys you know got gigs lined up or anything like that, or um, what are you doing, kind of thing to progress it." And we say, well, not a lot, we're only at college. And he sort of took it by the reins, mm. um, took the bull by the horns, and it was just, just what we needed at the time. And, yeah, it was, it was kind of wicked. Like, he just gave us this kind of instant support um, of, like, sort of what yeah. we wanted to do, the direction we wanted to go in. Simon had taken it seriously from day one, yeah. and that helped as well. He was so helpful with um, taking us there and making sure we were all organised. Because um, at the time, we were all 18, we didn't care. Well, not that we didn't care, but we were just, you know... In it for the last kind of thing. Gig, he was the good. one who was sort of saying, you know, you, are you ready? You know, we're going to go there. We're leaving at this time. You've got all the stuff. You've got the everything. Honestly, it was, as you say, invaluable. It was just me and Ed, and like Simon was like, look, boys, look what I've got. And obviously, he puts his hand down his trousers, and we're thinking, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Bottle of vodka, straight away. He emailed us all one day just saying, have you seen this? Let's put ourselves forward for it. And you didn't have to put anything in to start with, like an no. actual audio clip. You just sort of turned up on the day. Yeah, exactly. It was at the Prince's Hall in Aldershot. Have you seen School of Rock with the Battle of the Bands? It was like that, wasn't it? Oh, no, no, there, there, was, there was the first one. Do you remember, like, 
it was literally like an X Factor. That's what I mean. It was like, to go in and like you were like waiting in the back, like with your musical instruments, and they were like yeah. calling your names out, and it was like traffic sounds were like trembling, like shit. Where am I? Like oh, you go and yeah. walk through, you go and you play like five seconds. It wasn't. It was literally like yeah. ten seconds of forever, which is basically instrumental, and then they were like, okay, we've had enough. Yeah. So we did that. We went. We knew we were playing the next round, which was at the Prince Hall. It was a full official uh, gig where you get, I think, three minutes, didn't you? you got yeah. Three minutes to do. One of you, uh, half your own song and half the cover. We did um, Forever, which is a song Roscoe wrote, uh, and then we did Can't Buy Me Love, or one of the two in a different order. Um, that was a that was awesome show. Yeah, and it went it went really well actually, didn't it? Yep. And we got through to the next stage, which was at Guild Hall in Portsmouth. To be fair, we brought like 100 people down, did we? That was the weirdest thing. Yeah, we we turned up at the stage, and just the number of people that were there were at the front, ready to support us. And uh, we actually fully discussed how mm. we're going to get through this round. It became a lot more. Yeah. Um, of, an, of an aim to get through this one, not just a little gig, just to see how we do. It really become like, let's get to the O2 now, so one more round, let's, let's do it. Yeah, and, then, and then we're kind of like waiting to be called or not called. And and I, how I remember it is that the other three were kind of like, oh, it's done, it's not happening. I had a feeling. I yeah, like, I think we were all about. I just had a feeling. I was like, we're through. I was like, I'm, I was like, I'm telling you, like, the first name is going. Like, we went to the first name. I was like, I'm telling you, the first yeah. name is going to be called as ours. And boom, I was right. And we got through to the O2. Um, I think we. I always said the mistake we made there was trying to do too much. We overplayed. No, I, I do. This is where I disagree you with you guys. Agree. I, I, I don't know what Evan Grill think, but yeah. I, yeah, I'm always on the side of we nailed that. Yeah, that was. I've never ever been more scared for anything. Hmm. Um, but I mean, like, it was such. It was. I mean, like, just like the thrill of it. It was. It was great. So we were probably, I reckon, the youngest group there, though, weren't we? We were quite a yeah. young, yeah. quite a young group to be there, and we had. We'd only been a band for like two months, so yeah. if you think about it, it was. Mm. We weren't really sure, you know, what to play because we had like three songs anyway. In any case, we didn't win. Mm. No, we didn't win. But the band that did win, who knows what they're doing now? Yes. So that was after Live and Unsigned. Um, we just needed a bit of a new impetus and um, we sort of got into a bit of a rut. Traffic Sound for me was like the really early kind of stuff where we were just playing like what we wanted to play. Yeah. Like we played a lot of like songs in like major keys which were quite uplifting and happy and it was all about like, it was all about girls, you know, when you're at college and that sort of thing. And, yeah. and it, was, it was really good fun and we were literally writing, for, well for me anyway, we were just writing for ourselves. We need a rebrand almost. A staple clothing item we all happened to own was a Harrington jacket. The look that we were doing was like was black that? jeans, white shirt, and Harrington, a Harrington, Harrington jacket. jacket. Exactly. And we thought, oh, well, maybe if we're doing that, then maybe we can incorporate that into our name. Yeah. We thought maybe the Harringtons. How that we were inspired by the Beatles. The, Be the Beatles, like, when you say the word Beatles, before they became famous, you thought like, like Beatles is like the bug. But it's spelt Beatles as in beat, as in beat in music. Um, so, Tone at the end of ours is actually meant to be tone in music. It's not a Harrington, it's a Harrington. We yeah, released a changes. small EP with five songs on, and yeah. that was like the rebrand. And then we did a gig down at the something arms, Godwin Arms. I think it was open. Oh, yes. Where they want to put a new yes. Tesco now. Yeah, yeah. We did a gig there and sold a couple of EPs, mm -hmm. which was good. That obviously needed the name change, it sounded a lot cooler. Um, but the songs as well were like a lot more modern, weren't they? Like if you look at Harrington's songs, they're like, yeah. obviously you guys will all know them, but in the not likes of 16 year old you know, house part. Lucky Louise and all these different songs are a lot more like upbeat indie kind of songs that are probably yeah. more commercially viable rather than Traffic Sound, which was just like pure, what do you want to play? Mm. Um, oh, we've done recordings in between us, haven't we? That's what we were probably doing, not really gigging, we were doing recordings. Mm. Yeah, we, we've had a few experiences, some of them are weird. The guy with, that, the guy, the guy with the nails. Oh God, yeah, this man had, but, <laughs> <laughs> These nails, like they were like to here, weren't they? They were really, really yeah. long nails, and that was. And it's weird. <sighs> and then we did uh, a good recording at uh, down in Farncombe. And uh, but the, and that was a live recording, so we were all in different rooms, but you could see like there was like a tiny bit of window where like, I could see like the like a corner of Gwill and mm. like maybe like a hair of Roscoe, and yeah. we were all playing at the same time. But you can't see each other. It was really weird. But this guy who did it then, he yeah. was the guy with, with nails and was like... Yeah. Oh, when I was in like a little alleyway, I wasn't yeah, even in a booth. Alleyway. And it was really weird, you, we, I had to record in the corridor. Yeah, we bit. didn't have to, we just wanted to. Yeah, that was it. Didn't yeah. shower that day. I had a massive room. Yeah, 
Great. And it, but it's, what's great about a professional recording studio is it's nice and it's polished. And if you're in like a room, you've got your headphones on, but you can't hear what everyone's saying. But so anyways, I could be going like that Dom. Guy, that guy didn't know what he was doing recording what. No. Like, uh, the, like the quality of it was it's rubbish. Like, mm. But anyway, still, it's, it got us that uh, Imigo, that was it. Yeah. The Imigo competition mm. for the, so the songwriting thing. Uh, and that was the that, good and then, studio. Then we won, yeah, we won uh, these Imigo headphones, which are really cool. Um, and, and, a, and a day in a professional studio. I mean, that was good, and that was our first proper experience of like you know setting up. Yeah. You need to be over there because well, you otherwise feedback, feedback etc. Yeah, that was a good experience. Yeah. So we... That was the coolest recording experience ever, easily. This huge room, like huge facilities. Um, the guy, this guy knew what he was doing. A lot of bands will record. They'll do the layering of tracks, so they'll record the drum bit down first, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, and build up from there. And other times we'd like to try and combine bits of it so yeah, we didn't the have the time drums, or the money have the time of the money mainly but also i think it does give you a, a different you know the, you the different sound, sound, a different yeah. sound so the sound you probably get is probably a bit more cleaner but sometimes on certain songs of ours like age you want it to be a bit raw so we did a session afterwards where we were mixing um and that was quite interesting because before in terms of production we hadn't seen that too much and it's actually quite we play really well obviously as a group at the same time and i think we sound best like just playing stuff live and like, that was difficult for us, wasn't it? I guess that was interesting. We are practicing as many, well, as and when we can on Sunday evenings. Um, it's the most convenient time for all of us, so we practice as we're, we're all free, then we'll practice. Uh, now, well, well, we've, well, we've all got jobs, we've all got different things we're doing. It has turned into a bit more of a hobby. Mm -hmm. It was always a pipe dream, obviously, um, and it did get quite serious for a while, especially with the live and unsigned thing and sort of getting a bit of recognition. Because you, you never know whether you really are good. We, we never set out, I don't think we ever set out to like conquer the world and like be the next Justin Bieber. But it is something that we do because we want to do and it is fun and we'll always keep progressing in that sense. Of Absolutely. It's almost like, here we go, emotional. It's almost like traffic sand again because, you know, we're just playing what we want to play. Yeah. Isn't it? It's literally, you know, we'll play what maybe we want to play. Maybe we should change the name back. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe we should do like traffic go sound 2.0. We do this, be good fun and we get to play music, which we've loved it. We, we can be as far apart or we can be within five minutes of one another. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily change things. That's lovely. Yeah. We're, we're far apart, but our hearts, um, are, um, hearts are close. Um, we... <sighs> I think we've got, we got a great dynamic in terms of we have a laugh, we have a, everyone gets... So we've all got, like, little personas that different people attribute to each other.